On November 16, 1974, humanity made a decision that we can never undo. At the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, a team of astronomers led by Frank Drake and Carl Sagan aimed a massive radio dish at the sky. They weren't just looking for stars, they were looking for an audience. They fired a focused radio signal at the globular star cluster M13, located 25,000 light years away. It was a message consisting of 1,679 binary digits. To us, it looks like a pixelated video game character. To an alien mathematician, it is a detailed dossier of the human race. We told them what we are made of, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus. We told them what we look like, a bipedal creature with a height of roughly 1.7 meters. We told them our population, and most critically, we told them exactly where we live. We didn't stop there. In 1977, we launched the Voyager probes. Attached to the hull is a golden record containing a map. It uses 14 pulsars, rapidly spinning neutron stars, to triangulate the exact location of our sun in the Milky Way. It is a celestial GPS coordinate leading directly to Earth. At the time, this was seen as a beautiful gesture Sagan believed that any civilization advanced enough to travel the stars would have evolved past violence. He believed that advanced meant benevolent. It was a noble thought. But in the cold math of cosmic survival, optimism is a luxury. And sending a map to your home in a jungle filled with unknown predators is not brave. It is suicidal. Now, skeptics often argue that we are safe. They say that radio waves follow the inverse square law, meaning the signal gets weaker the further it travels. They claim our TV broadcasts and radio leaks turn into unintelligible static after just 100 light years. And they are right, regarding leaks. But Arecibo wasn't a leak. It was a shout. It was a high-gain transmission. By using the massive dish to focus the energy into a tight beam, the effective radiated power was not just a few kilowatts, it was 20 trillion watts. At that intensity, the Arecibo beam was millions of times brighter than the sun in the radio spectrum. It does not simply fade away. It travels through the vacuum of space, carrying its binary payload for millions of years. But who could hear it? Consider this. We are currently building the Square Kilometer Array. When finished, it will be able to detect an airport radar on a planet 50 light years away. That is our level of technology. Now imagine a Kardashev Type II civilization, a species that can harness the energy of their entire star. To them, our faint signal would shine like a spotlight in a dark room. The physics are clear. The signal doesn't stop. It just waits to be caught. We shouted into the dark with the loudest voice we could muster, and the physics of radio waves guarantees one terrifying fact. If anyone was listening in that direction, they heard us. But if the galaxy is old and radio waves are easy to make, where is everyone? This is the Fermi Paradox. The Milky Way is 13.6 billion years old. It contains up to 400 billion stars. Even if life is one in a trillion rare, there should be civilizations everywhere. It only takes a few million years for a civilization to spread across the galaxy. On cosmic timescales, that is a blink of an eye we should see Dyson spheres blocking stars. We should hear a cacophony of radio chatter. We should see robotic von Neumann probes mining the asteroid belts. Instead, we see nothing. We hear nothing. The universe is terrifyingly quiet. For decades, we tried to explain this away. Maybe we are the first. Maybe they all destroyed themselves with nuclear weapons. Maybe we are in a zoo. But there is a darker explanation. One that suggests the silence isn't a lack of life, but a survival strategy. What if every other civilization is quiet because they know something we don't? Imagine a forest at night. If it is silent, it doesn't mean there are no animals. It means the animals are hiding from the wolves. In this metaphor, humanity is the toddler walking through the dark woods, screaming hello at the top of our lungs. This brings us to the dark forest theory popularized by author Liu Cixin. It applies game theory to evolution. It relies on two axioms. One, survival is the primary need of any civilization. 
2. Civilizations grow and expand, but the universe's matter is finite. This creates a chain of suspicion. If you meet another civilization, you cannot know their true intentions. They might send a peace treaty, but is it a trap? Even if they are peaceful today, what about in 500 years? This is the concept of the technological explosion. We went from horse-drawn carriages to nuclear weapons in less than 100 years. To an alien observer, Earth is a rapidly growing threat. We are weak today, but we could be a rival tomorrow. In a universe with limited resources and infinite danger, the safest move is not diplomacy. It is elimination. If you see a sprouting civilization, you don't wait for it to grow. You prune it. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost. If he finds another life, another hunter, an angel, or a demon, he can do only one thing, open fire and eliminate them. Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest minds in history, warned us explicitly against active SETI, the practice of sending messages. He said, if aliens visit us, the outcome would be much as when Columbus landed in America, which didn't turn out well for the Native Americans. Hawking understood that when a Type 1 civilization meets a Type 3 civilization, it isn't a meeting of equals, it is a meeting of a bug and a windshield. We are the bug. Yet we continue to shout. We continue to debate, sending more messages. We act as if we are lonely, desperate for a friend in the stars. But we have never stopped to consider that the silence is there for a reason. The Arecibo message has traveled 50 light years. It has passed thousands of stars. If there is a hunter in that sector, the data is already in their hands. They know our DNA. They know our weaknesses. And thanks to the Voyager map, they know exactly where to find us. We can only hope the skeptics are right and the signal gets lost in the noise. Because if the physics holds true and the signal is clear, then the clock is already ticking. The protocol should be simple. Do not answer. Do not reply. Do not speak. In the dark forest, silence is not empty. Silence is survival. This is the largest radio radar telescope on the planet Earth the Arecibo Observatory. It's located in a remote valley on the island of Puerto Rico. It sends and receives radio signals, but it's so large and powerful that it could communicate with an identical radio telescope 15,000 light years away, halfway to the center of the Milky Way galaxy that if we made a serious such search and succeeded, the results would be inestimable. We will have ended the isolation of mankind from the rest of the universe forever.